Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a 2D clicker style game in Unity and welcome to episode 12. This time we're going to take a look at some main menus, so i.e. we're going to work with some scene changes and we'll work a little bit more with our player prefs. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the little bell icon to update with this series and everything else on my channel. And with that in mind, let's create a brand new scene. So, best way to do this is if we go to file and click new scene. We'll open up one just like we started with when we first started this series. Now the idea of a main menu is pretty obvious. It takes you from the menu into the game and I'm going to have the same principle working with this as we had with our previous scene. So I'm going to go to window, lighting, settings and I'm going to click on the little button here and let's have evening. Let's have it like this blue kind of colour. And once again, I'm going to apply the script that we had previously, which was rotate sky and just attach it to the main camera. Press play. And I think it's working. Yeah, I can see it moving ever so slightly. I think by default it is quite slow again. So let's have this 0.5. Uh, press play. And yeah, you can see it moving. So that's all fine. Now let's create a menu. So game object. 3D object. In fact, no, do you know what? We'll, we'll just do the plain old simple way. Why not? If you want to create some massive cool 3D object that rotates with a big logo on, that's entirely up to you. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to have this white. I'm going to have Jimmy's 2D Clicker. I think that was the title we had on the other scene. Uh, let's make it big. So let's have it as 50. Let's have it center and center again. Now let's create some buttons and we'll have game object, UI and button. And this one we will call new game, new game. And hold control, press D, duplicate, bring it down beneath like so. And we'll just call this load game, load game. So. Let's change the text on that one. So also say load game and new game as well. We'll change it to say new game. Now we've dealt with buttons before. Uh, I'm not going to change these buttons at all. I'm going to leave them as their default look, but it's entirely up to you. It is your game you're developing after all. So you do what you need to do with these buttons. So in the same way we've previously got buttons working, we have to create a script. So right click. Create C sharp script. We'll call this main menu options. And in here, what we're going to do is we're going to declare in our namespace something that helps us transfer from one scene to another. And that is going to be using a scene management tool. Now, it's also worth noting at this point in development, because we're starting to deal with scenes, we have to make sure we're dealing with them correctly. So firstly, let's get rid of void start, void update. And let's type at the top in our namespace using unity engine dot scene management semicolon. Next thing we need to do is create those methods. So public void and we'll call this one new game open close bracket open curly bracket and before we go any further let's actually set our scenes up correctly now what we need to do is make sure we save this scene first so file save scene and we'll call this main menu what we'll need to do is set this into a menu which then can define in a script what number scene this is. So file and build settings and I'm sure we've been here before very early on because we dealt with changing our platform here. What we need to do in this case is click on add open scenes and this will add the main menu as scene zero. Close that down, resave the scene then head back to our main scene that we create with our clicker game in and then go to file, build settings and click open, uh, add open scenes. And it will see right here, it adds it as scene number one. This number here, this integer number one, we have to remember at this point. That is going to help us when we go into our game. So if we go back to our main menu, back to our script, what we'll need to do is we'll have to load that scene 
which is number one. So scene manager dot load scene and in brackets one semicolon. Now the next thing we'll need to do is create an actual variable here which is static to say that we are loading a game. So in this case we'll have to go public static uh, we'll have it as a bool and we'll have is loading because we're loading our game not starting a new and by default we'll have this equal to false and what this means is because it's false when we press new game it'll load as false and the reason we have this is because we're going to create another script in our main game which says yes we are loading our game so let's load these player preps so public void load game open close bracket open curly bracket is loading equals true semicolon and then scene manager dot load scene in brackets one semicolon and save the script so essentially what is happening is we're loading the same scene in both instances however in the load game one we're going to make a script to recognize that we need to read our player preps so if we go back to unity and just let it think down here for a second perfect uh, what i might do actually is just add the bgm sound to the camera just so we have a little bit of audio and for each of these buttons now we're going to add a game object and we'll attach that script to it which was main menu options right there now first button new game uh, let's add all this as we have done previously for buttons and this one is new game same again for load game and drag and drop no function main menu and load game and save so firstly let's try out our new game button so press play click new game and there we are straight into our clicker game and it is its default setting everything is default now this is where the fun happens because we have to create a script which allows us to load but what i'm going to do is quickly turn down the volume of that it's quite loud okay and save the scene head back to our main scene and in the scripts folder we need to right click create c sharp script and we'll call this game loader and open it up in visual studio now next thing we need to do here is we need to initially load in that variable that we created in the other script so we need to say that if we are loading then we need to do this and we can get rid of void update we don't need that and we don't need any annotations so we'll start building this from inside the start method and we'll go if and in brackets main menu options dot is loading equals true then we do the following now we have to reference our player prefs so i think we should probably open up our save game script and right here what i'll do is i will copy these lines of code here within the save the game method down here so i'll copy from that but i won't copy the cop uh, top one just for now so copy those and in game loader in here there we go so what we're going to do is we're going to say in this case player prefs dot set int saved cookies is based off that so we need to get an integer so what we need to do is set variables for these five values so let's start by saying public int saved cookies semicolon and then public int saved cache semicolon uh, public int and saved bakers semicolon next yep yeah, you probably guessed it hopefully you guys are ahead of me at this point so public int saved shops semicolon and finally it is the save value so we need to go public int saved uh, value 
Now you'll notice I have put saved uh, with a D there, even though it does say save value. We're going to change that because I don't want to have two, uh, two variables the same in this case. So we're going to base ourselves off what's happening here and start off with saved cookies equals player preps dot get int and in brackets and quotes we need to put this here we need to make sure it is typed exactly the same that's why i'm copying and pasting simply because i don't want to get to a point where i've mistyped something and it doesn't work so we can close bracket close and semicolon and then next thing we need to do is basically take that value and place it in here so we can take global cookies dot cookie count here and make it equal to saved cookies semicolon and that is the first one done so then next thing obviously we can actually cheat a little bit because we can copy that line of code place it here and change that to cache okay uh it's gone a bit wrong there because i pressed the insert button so equals player press dot get int and it's saved cache so if you have any problems with any of these scripts as i always say you can get them on the website for free head over there downloads and assets and global cache dot cache count is now equal to saved cache semicolon so that's that second one done next we need to take this one again so we can copy that line of code change it to saved bakers and that one copy that player pref name into there and uh, save bakers isn't it with an s at the end there we go and now uh, it's this one my apologies so we copy this variable and make that equal to saved bakers semicolon so that's that one done so hopefully you guys can see the process of what's going on here to load and save all these different variables to actually load and save a game so save chops is the play pref get int which is in save chops and then global shop dot number of shops is equal to saved shops semicolon so we can get rid of that one and save value we can get rid of and the last thing we need to do is this one so we can copy that again and that's going to be saved value and then copy that player pref into there and lastly yeah you know what it is guys we have to make the save value equal to here so we need to make sure we're getting the right thing here and it's save value in the save game script so it's going to be save game dot save value equals saved value semicolon get rid of that last line there and save the script so by default remember we're loading this as false so let's place our script if i can find it which one was it it was game loader wasn't it so game loader needs to go onto the mechanics object right there and we don't need to set any variables we can see here that's fine so if we press play we should be able to see that nothing happens here because we've not initiated this if statement within the method that's all fine so the question is if we save our scene now go to our main menu and press play now we already have some saved values from our previous episode so let's try this out load game and there we go we can see we have all this saved we just loaded the cookies and the cache that we had previously only thing we need to sort out here is look the cost says zero so let's sort this out now if we go to our main scene press play by default the cost is supposed to be 10 so we need to go to our mechanics object and save game right here 
and we need to double check that we're doing everything right at this point. Now, save value is 10, and we need to make sure saved value right here is going to be correct. So let's redo our save and see if we can get it working. So we've initiated a new game. We're making some cookies, selling some cookies, make some more, sell some more. So save game. There we go. So what should have happened now is we should have seven cookies, $13 and $20 save value. So if we stop the game, head to our main menu and press play and then press load game. There we go. We have loaded it absolutely perfect. So the reason I believe this was initially loaded as zero is because we altered that after we created the save in the last episode. So we've got pretty much everything working nicely now. Uh, next episode, what I want to take a look at is a couple more scenes, things like uh, a splash screen, because everyone loves a good splash screen. And we'll also discuss where we can go from here with the game you've developed. So guys, until that next episode, thank you very much for watching.